All right, everybody, welcome back to the balmy, wonderful weather of North Ohio. And just as promised, I'm gonna start the compressor installation as well as the line set connectivity to the compressor. Now, I already have the line sets uh, run where I want them to run. You can see them coming out of the house right there. And I'll take you up in the attic and show you how I connect them and uh, how I actually connected two line sets together to make my line set uh, total length longer. Uh, because the units only came with uh, 15 foot lengths, I bought an additional three 25 foot lengths to make my runs, and I'll show you what I did in just a little bit. So follow along, and here we go. Okay, this is my head unit going into the kitchen. This is my line set I have run. I'm gonna go ahead and, and get that hooked up right now. When you let these things go, you're gonna hear uh, pressure release. That's fine, they're not charged with Freon or anything. They're sealed with uh, a pressure test on them. So it's completely normal to let this go and then hear air escape from it. Don't get freaked out. All right, I'm gonna do the quarter inch line first because it's on the bottom. All right, that's good and tight. All right, so here's the first one done. Now the instructions say that you have to wrap this and it comes with a, uh, a wrapping material, I believe, that you can wrap over this. So I'm going to do that, just not right now. I'm gonna get them all hooked up first. Okay, so I'm at my second head unit, and it's a little difficult to work on. It's kind of in a cramped space, and it's just very uncomfortable to work in this particular location. So I'm gonna set the camera up and try to get the best view for you guys. All right, I hope this is set up in the right place. I think it is. So I'm just gonna do the same thing here. Loosen up these fittings. This one is really, really, really uncomfortable to work on. Again, don't be worried about the sound of air that comes out of these. They're under pressure when they ship from the factory. It's not loaded with Freon or anything. All 
All right, so just like the other one, we're gonna do the quarter line first. Because it's on the bottom, it's just easier to get to. That one's good to go. My last head unit has the longest run. So I had to buy a couple extra line sets to make this work. Uh, these are two 25 foot line sets that, uh, that had to be joined together. So I chose to swage and sweat them. So the kit that I used to do this marked up the lines really good. I'm not really happy with how the kit worked. Roughly probably eight minutes each one to put the kit on and swage it. Uh, I ended up getting a different swager, which takes about five seconds, and I'll go over that when I'm done showing this to you. But this is how I connected the two line sets together. If they don't hold a vacuum, then I'll have to come up and redo these. Okay, so this is my longest run. And this goes to my third head unit. So let's get this one hooked up. There's a lot of dust up here and I forgot to get my dust mask. Now what you also want to do is make sure you're wrenching on the actual line set nut and not the head unit nut. You want the line set nut to be twisting. You don't want to be twisting the head unit nut because you, you basically damage the whole thing. And that's a big no-no. All right, so I've got uh, two lines up here to solder together. All right, so I'm working on my basement. Uh, <laughs> take two. All right, so I'm working down in the basement and working on the main electrical power for my AC compressor that I'm gonna be putting outside. Now the AC compressor outside is uh, basically gonna be right here in this corner outside. Uh, so in this room that I'm at, this is my laundry room. Uh, hi, laundry room. It used to be a laundry room slash kitchen uh, when my great aunt owned the house and way back in the, well, she owned the house from the fifties all the way to like 92 when she passed away. Um, so this used to be a kitchen, a second kitchen down here. So she had a, uh, a second stove, um, right here. Now this isn't her actual stove, but the hookup for the stove was right there to, to run the power. So instead of running a line from the AC panel over to the wall, to power my, my compressor. I'm just gonna take that old stove uh, line, which is rated at 60 amps, it's a six gauge line. I put it in junction box, 
right here. And then I've got my new six gauge line running out of the top of the junction box. And that'll go over here and out the wall to power my compressor. Here are a few pictures showing my back patio build. This patio was here prior to me doing foundational work. I obviously had to replace it before I can place my compressor back here. So I wanted to take video, but my phone battery was just not lasting real long. But this is how it looked after I completed it. I rented a skid steer to do some work in the lawn, and it came in real handy to move this compressor since it weighs almost 300 pounds. Here the compressor is in place, and the electric boxes are also installed. The electric box is a 60 amp disconnect. I also put in a GFI protected outlet here. Alright, so I wanted to take a quick video of the electrical work. As I stated before, you just got to follow the numbers. Uh, inside on the head units, I have red to one, I have white to two, and I have black to three, and then your ground goes to ground. And this is the main power coming in from the, uh, the junction box, which I have here. Uh, I installed all of this, this trip. So it's very straightforward, very simple. I also had the line sets hooked up. I only have three of the head units on here. I called uh, Thermocore and their technical representative got back to me. I was concerned if I could only run three head units on a five unit compressor. He said as long as I'm at a minimum of 36, uh, BT, 36,000 BTUs and I should be fine. So each of my head units is 12,000 BTUs so I should be good. Uh, later down the road I'll be installing the other two heads. I have right now a vacuum on the system. Uh, just checking to make sure that there aren't any leaks. The vacuum looks pretty good. It's been like that for about an hour. Okay, I also wanted to note the importance of marking your electrical lines as well as your line sets because you want to hook up each line set to the corresponding unit on the electrical line. So down here you have numbers A, B, C. Oh, you can't see the A, B, C, but D, E uh, for a five unit system. I have A, B, and C hooked up. You need the corresponding electrical for A, B, and C to be hooked up to the, your electrical panel. So that's very important. So I have uh, the electrical marked red, white, and then black. And then I also have tape down there for the, the red. There's the black. And then uh, I didn't tape the white because it's already white. All right, guys. So while it's rainy and nasty outside, I'm going to talk to you about swaging tools. I'm not a swage master. Uh, I do occasional plumbing on my DIY stuff. This is really my first time swaging for uh, refrigeration line sets. So this is a swage kit that I picked up. They're all over eBay, all over Amazon. Uh, they say high quality refrigeration tools. Um, they're high quality, you know, from their origin of manufacture. So this is just an example of what you get. You gotta unclamp it with these. It opens up, you put your tube in whatever size hole that you're gonna do. Um, if you're flaring, you do one side. If you're swaging, you do the other. And then you have this tool here, which has several different heads. This is obviously the flare tool that comes on this one. And then you have uh, different types of swaging heads that are also available that come in the kit. Uh, this is a particular quarter inch to three eighths, I believe. It works, but it's not great. Uh, it takes a lot of time and obviously there's a learning curve to whenever you use a new tool and I certainly am a victim of that learning curve. So this is the end result. Y you know, by looking at it, it doesn't look terrible, but this is only about a quarter inch, the swage. So you don't get a really solid union when you put the two pipes together. Only about a quarter inch. This is the half inch. The half inch was a little bit better. The teeth marks aren't quite as severe. Uh, but again, you know, the union isn't really that great. Let me show you what's better. Let me introduce you to the spin swage drill bit.
That's it. That's all the time it takes. Now look at the union here. Look at the depth of that union. Look at that. Okay, here's the half inch. That's it. Maybe three seconds on that one. Maybe. Let's look at the union now. Holy cow. That's about a five eighths, five eighths union. You know, a little bit of slop, a little bit of play, but you still got a nice deep union in there. All right, just a quick recap. If you want some really clean, fast copper unions when you're doing line sets or anything with soft copper, ixnay this and get some spin drill bit and you get really awesome unions. Check that out. Can't go wrong. Highly recommended. That's awesome. Well, you're still here. Go home. It's over. Ha, 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 ha.